Let's go ahead and summarize what we've just learned. The idea of a function is at the heart of both mathematics and computer science. For example, when mathematicians want to think very formally about the system of numbers, they use functions to create the integers. Functions are important in computer science in a different way. They give us a way to think about processes, or more simply, a way to think about something happening or something changing. A function embodies a transformation of information, taking in something that we know and returning something that we didn't know. That's what computers do. They can help us transform data to produce new results much faster than a human ever could. And a lot of the math taught in school is about numbers, but we've seen that functions don't have to be about numbers. In fact, we've even used functions in games and objects. You can imagine functions as things that programmers can use to transform information of any kind at all. Part of the definition of a function is that you always get the same answer whenever you call a function with the same arguments. The value returned by the function, in other words, what the function is doing, shouldn't change regardless of anything you may have already computed. What that means is that each and every time, we know what we're getting with that function. In this lecture, we also briefly discussed loops and talked about how programmers can set some goal that our code will run until it hits that goal. Loops are powerful because they allow us to get a program to where we want it. But they can also be dangerous because programmers make mistakes, sometimes even accidentally, that set impossible goals. Now that's dangerous, right? Because if our code runs until we reach a goal and the goal is impossible to reach, our code might run forever and crash our computer. Think about a program where the programmer sets the goal to be a number that is both greater than zero and less than zero. That's an impossible goal to reach, and we'd be stuck in something called an infinite loop. Now that we've had a chance to talk about these two ways of making our code more concise, keep functions and loops in mind as you complete the next few activities.